Yeah, the uh, 100th World Series underway under at Fenway Park. Boston, St. Louis, our Baseball Tonight crew puts you in the batter's box. He buried the New York Yankees and Mark Bellhorn doing the same to the St. Louis Cardinals. A home run at the bottom of the eighth helps Boston go on and take game one of the 2004 World Series. Welcome to Fenway Park. Harold Reynolds and John Cruck to get us through the highlight thoughts of Peter Gammons coming up in just a second. So here's Big Poppy, David Ortiz, the LCS MVP. Johnny Pesky played in the 46 World Series. Tony La Russa did not. But he's managed in a few of these. Jason Veritek not starting with the knuckleballer Wakefield pitching in. Woody Williams on the hill for St. Louis and early. Wild. Yeah, he was. And this is an indication of it. You're going to see this ball bounce off Cabrera's shoulder and nick him in the side of the face. But the story is Woody Williams. He struggled early with his control. We mentioned Johnny Pesky earlier. He's got a pole named after him in right field. And David Ortiz gone fishing with that pole. His fifth home run of the postseason. Boston up three to nothing early and Woody Williams wild and getting hit hard. And I think that was a pitch right there that Woody wanted to bury down and in instead of leaving it up about knee high. David Ortiz ain't been missing that one for about a month and a half. The top three, one out. Red Sox got another one to make it four zip now, four one. And you're going to wear 33 in Boston to be named Larry. You got to play large. And Walker did around the pole. Cardinals down four to two. Jump ahead, Boston built themselves a five-run lead. It was 7-2. Wakefield walked, the bases loaded. Matheny to right, Nixon the catch, Edmonds the tag, Millar the cutoff, and then the meltdown. See the double clutch the Harold and threw it into the dugout. Yeah, once he double clutches, he probably should have held on to it. But even more so, Carl, the Cardinals stayed aggressive. Even when they were down 7-2, to they continued to put the pressure on the... Boston Red Sox defense. Bronson Arroyo had his frisbee working, so to Gucci who started in left, and Arroyo throws it away. Maybe he should have tossed that little frisbee to first there. It would have helped. Taguchi goes to second. The GM sits back down to watch this. Edgar Renteria past Manny Ramirez. So scores. Cards down 7-6. The five-run lead blowing up. Arroyo not happy. Next batter is 33. Watch Millar going down. He goes. An RBI double the right. Walker begins a night of extra base hits. Seven and seven. In the seventh inning, Kiko Calero now on for the Cardinals. The baby bull, Manny Ramirez, after a couple of lousy walks by Calero, Ramirez to first and fired up. Red Sox up 8-7. Hang on, Manny. Back to first. Manny ran to first with his arm up like they just won the World Series. Not over yet. Not yet. David Ortiz back up, not getting walked. Oh, what a nasty hop off Tony Womack. Hit him in the chest, may have got him on the collarbone. He was taken out of the game, x-rays negative. And it looks like Tony's going to be back. He's, he, he got through this. He's going to be back wanting to lead off in game two. We'll see how, what happens there. See if he can convince Tony La Russa to do so. Eighth inning, folks on. He comes on with one out in a big spot, and he cannot deliver. And then Manny kicks it around, which allows the pinch runner, Jason Marquis. Yes, he's the pitcher to score. Cards down a run, 9-8. Marquis called safe at home. Well, Ed Montague, great position, makes the right call on that play. He's still bobbling it. He's safe. Next batter, it's 33 again. Walker, flares went into left. Manny's got it. Knee, ow! Dug a huge divot. Sent himself sprocketing up, and the ball went off his glove. Never went in it. Cedeno ties it. It gets away from Miller, but no more damage done. This is one of those cartoon moments right there, man. That was that was ugly. The divot caused a flip, and as only Manny can provide. Lucky he didn't hurt his knee. Both to Edmonds. Oh, on the inside corner. Montague punches him out, tied at nine after the eighth. Julian Tavares, or Julian Tavares. Capital J, he got jumped by Bellhorn, 11-9. Back-to-back, same pitch, Bellhorn had pulled one foul, the same yep. slider, that one he left out over the plate, and he got him off the pole. Boston dugout has to come out to see if it would stay fair, it hit high off the pole, just like he had done at Yankee Stadium against the Yanks. Then in the ninth, Folk, Roger Cedeno. Seems like the more pitches Folk throws, the better he gets. Boston celebrates a win. The final score was 11 to 9. Some bizarre numbers in this game. How about Woody Williams? He allowed seven runs and got only seven outs. 
Three other Game 1 starters have allowed seven or more in less than three innings. This was the third time that both starting pitchers lasted less than four in Game 1 of the World Series. Walker, the offensive hero for the Cardinals. Boston had a few with their 13 hits. Terry Francona gets his first World Series victory as a manager. And that was not an instructional video to send to the instructional league or something. You know, that was that was a little rough. I mean, on my way out here, I walked out through the outfield and I about twisted an ankle where Manny had his divot. And that was, uh, we did some things wrong, but we persevered and we won. And that's, we set out to win today, so it's really a great day. But we did make some mistakes that we need to clean up on. It's going to be a battle, you know, we're going to score runs, they're going to score runs, and, you know, it's whoever can get the last one. And, uh, you know, this, this team's got a lot of heart and character, and they uh, somehow, I think we got the confidence to come back, so, so we do. They also had a 2-0 lead. They won those two first games on the road. Harold Reynolds is here. John Kruk will take us through the highlight, and then we'll get the thoughts from Peter Gammons in just a sec. So, yeah, Schilling's on the hill. We know what he did in the LCS. His ankle was bothering him so much. When he woke up on Sunday, he didn't think he'd be able to pitch. He's out there with a bloody ankle, and he's getting some support early. Two outs, and that's a theme in this game. Two out hits. Jason Veritek delivers. Carl, they move Veritek up in the order. Protect Ramirez and Ortiz. He came through with a big triple right there. He sure did. First triple in the World Series, and he got a little rip in the old pants for that one. He gave him some pants. <laughs> First and second. Here are the Cardinals trying to mount a rally. Schilling with men going. Right at you, Billy Miller and Reggie Sanders ran into the glove. That was after a strange play. He was going first to third at the freeze. He tried to steal there and hit into a double play. Double play. You couldn't get Pujols out. His second extra base hit. He earlier had got a double, and here you see him deliver a double in the fourth. So Albert can't get out, but boy, Roland and Edmonds keep struggling. Well, and that's the key to this series. If they don't start hitting, it doesn't matter how many hits Albert collects in these next few games. If Roland and Edmonds are struggling, they're done. Nixon makes the catch. Meantime, Pujols to third, and he advances home on the error by Miller, his second error of the game. He had dropped one earlier in foul territory when he and Veritek couldn't decide who gets it. Two outs, no problema. Jim Edmonds playing just behind second base, has to go all the way back to the wall. The double, and once again, the Red Sox with two outs get a big hit from Bellhorn. They're up four to one. Schilling. That familiar, eerily familiar blood of the KALS, that strikeout ALS, as he's been such a proponent of knocking out that terrible disease. He knocked out the Cardinals with another double play. And he limped off in the fifth. Little concern in the sixth inning more. He really did pitch his way out of jams because the Red Sox kept putting him in jams. Well, they just couldn't seem to get the handle on the ball to get that last out to get him out of that sixth inning. Three errors ties a World Series record. They committed four again and for some reason are unable to catch routine ground balls. And this could have this could have been what cost him not coming out for the seventh. But instead, Miller makes the tough play. Getting the third in front of the base runner. Sometimes as an infielder, Harold, you know that the t easiest ones to make are the ones you don't think on. Francona uh, says, you're done. Not done. Orlando Cabrera going wall. Again, two strikes and two outs. That one off Eldred, the Cardinal bullpen. Again, unable to hold him to zeros while the Red Sox bullpen was outstanding. Veritek swing and a drive. Watch this catch by Edmonds. This team played one series here last year. They're not that familiar with this turf, and wow, basket catch at the wall. That was off of Wendy, Carl, and he stayed with that ball. There are some crazy fly balls in this game tonight. Eighth inning once again. Francona goes to Folk, this time not with one out, but two outs, and he doesn't need 36 pitches in this one. Key strike out there. Crocky talked about how you got to get Edmonds going. He was punched out a couple times in this game. Larry Walker did not do what he did in game one. He also struggled. He had a couple of strikeouts in an O for four effort. 6-2, Red Sox victorious. Kurt Schilling, six innings, no earned runs, and four strikeouts. Again, I, it's just so many things happened today. I, I promise you that when I took, walked out of that dugout today to head to the bullpen, uh, the most shocked person in the stadium was my wife. Uh, because, uh, I mean, I, I woke up at 7 o'clock this morning, which is a tip-off right there. I've never woken up at 7 o'clock in the morning for anything in my life. Um, I wasn't gonna pitch. I, I couldn't walk. I couldn't. I couldn't. I couldn't move. I. I. I don't know what had happened, but I knew that when I woke up, there was a problem. I, I went. I honest to God, did not think I was gonna take the ball today. Didn't. I didn't think I could. Um, and then everything starts happening. 
you start looking around at your teammates and, and understanding what you've been through over the last eight months, what it means to me. Uh, and, and I did what I did last time. I went to the Lord for, for help because I knew, again, I wasn't going to be able to do this myself. Um, and, you know, thank God for Dr. Morgan and Chris Kareni and Jimmy Rowe and Dr. Theodore. Um, they made it work. Uh, I went out there and, and uh, well, it happened. One of those east to west pitchers. He's done it in the east coast with Philadelphia and Boston, and he did it out west with Arizona. You see his career World Series stats. Six starts, very impressive, three and one record with a 211 ERA, and perhaps the most impressive batters just hitting.